Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. Named after King Louis the Sixteenth, the dictator. So we know how to honor oppressors and tyrants, but we don't know how to honor freedom fighters. Abraham Lincoln's statue is hidden behind a bunch of trees by the public library, but we don't have um, any uh, uh, statues that actually speak up for freedom and for liberty and democracy. We do have a big-ass Confederate statue, the tallest Confederate statue in Kentucky. In fact, all of Kentucky, even though Kentucky was part of the Union, most of Kentuckians fought and died for the Union. Even though we fought for the right side, we fought against slavery, we fought against the uh, traitors, against the United States of America, even though we fought against them, we, in our minds, as a collective whole, think of ourselves as antebellum South, okay? So we still got this uh, Scarlet O'Hara dreams, we got this uh, uh, misnomer that, the, that Kentucky is South, it's actually center, it's like in the middle, so I don't know why we would be North or South, we would be the middle, right, uh, so that we were a border state, um, uh, yeah, so, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where, what, what the point, where I was going with all that, so, fuck it, let's just keep on going, um, right now, it's, uh, it's important, oh yeah, we don't have any symbols for freedom and democracy, but we do have a uh, Confederate statue, which is the largest statue in the state of Kentucky, but out of the entire state, even though Kentucky fought for the Union, we only have one pro-Union monument, and that's out in uh, Lewis County, next to Mason County in Maysville, so one county has a pro-Union, pro-Lincoln statue. Uh, which says that we was proud to fight for the Union. We was proud to actually do it. And it was everlasting right, and it will always be everlasting right. Um, and while we don't have any uh, monuments for the Union, we do have a Confederate monument, and we do have a pretentious King Louis the Sixteenth monument in downtown Louisville. So King Louis the Sixteenth, a tyrant and oppressor, we immortalize him. We say what a great guy he is. And yet, if you wear a Guy Fox mask. You know, you'll be thrown in jail. So if you represent freedom, democracy, independence, you'll go to jail. If you represent hierarchy, oppression, uh, even enough oppression that the French people want to kill you, like King Louis the Sixteenth, uh, here in America, especially in Louisville, we will honor the oppressor till the day we die. Louisville, here it is, King Louisville, King Six Louis the Sixteenth Ville. This is the land of King Louis the Sixteenth. So. French didn't like him, but uh, we'll fucking keep him. Why not? Let's let's keep Louisville, King Louis the Sixteenth's name on our city. Yeah, good, good name, Louisville. Great, great legacy you're carrying on there. So right now, progressives, all the progressives out there in the state of Kentucky, Kentucky is a safe state. Kentucky is a safe state, meaning it's going to go safely for Mitt Romney. Sorry to break it to you, Kentucky. November 6th, you're going to go to Mitt Romney. It's already in the cards. I already know about it. Mitt Romney and Obama know about it. They're not spending hardly any ads here. They're not going to spend any time. They'll fly into Heber and Kentucky, and then they'll drive to Cincinnati and Ohio, where they actually care about the uh, constituents up there. They'll try to get Ohio voters and Virginia voters, uh, but they won't try to get any Kentucky voters. It's it's not worth it. Mitt Romney's going to win, so Mitt Romney already has it in the back. He don't give a fuck. If you already got a state, you know, yeah, you got to go in there and say, uh, I like you, and I'm going to fight for you, and I love the American people and shit, but you're not going to say anything relevant. You're not going to try to stir up the crowd or say something, you know, uh, use it for scenery or, I don't know. I, I don't expect Obama or Romney to come into Kentucky for any reason. Since it's a safe state, it's not a swing state, and since it's a safe state, that means we can safely vote for a third-party candidate and not feel like, our vote has been wasted. In fact, you're wasting your vote if you vote for Barack Obama or Mitt Romney. Your vote's wasted. Mitt Romney's going to win Kentucky. It's August 11th, 2012 now. I'm calling us two months uh, before the election even happens, or three months before the election even happens. So, yeah. Mitt, Mitt Romney's going to take Kentucky, and after Mitt Romney takes Kentucky, uh, he will do nothing for us, since he didn't have to to begin with, and we're spending to, uh, you know, we're voting to cut our own ball sack off since they're going to have less social spending here in the state of Kentucky and since we're a poor state we need all the social spending that we can get we're going to vote for Republican and so us chickens voting for Colonel Sanders we're going to vote for Colonel Sanders and be surprised when our heads are chopped off that's the way Kentucky politics works keep on voting for Colonel Sanders and we the chickens so it's time for the chickens to get together and organize and have an animal farm uprising and rebel against the farmer 
or the dictator, or the state, or big brother, or the ownership class, the shadowy business interests that actually use the politicians as puppets. So, the um, progressives, all those people who were opposed to the war, we can strike. We can do something right now. We can become relevant electorally if we vote for third party candidate Jill Stein. If we vote for Jill Stein 2012, that will pull Obama to the left. Obama will see that there's 20% or 10% or so of Kentuckians who are pissed off and they're smart and they understand politics and they're actually voting uh, for somebody more liberal than Obama. So that would pull him to the left. Right now Obama and Mitt Romney are running to the middle. And uh, Obama's already capitulated many times with the Republicans, so he's been running to the right ever since he's been in office. We need to pull Obama back. We need to pull him back. So if you're opposed to the wars, if you're opposed to the NDAA, if you want Guantanamo Bay closed, if you don't want the Patriot Act to be continued, if you want your freedoms and your privacy rights back, if you don't want the NSA reading all your emails and uh, uh, listening to all your phone calls, if you don't want the TSA playing with your balls and taking pictures of your wife naked, if you don't want these things to happen, then you will vote uh, for a third-party candidate that is against all these things. Rand Paul is against all these things, and a lot of times your uh, Tea Party candidates, your legitimate Tea Party, not your Karl Rove uh, dickheads, but your um, Rand Paul and Ron Paul uh, Tea Party people, they're speaking louder against the war and about the atrocities than the Democrats are. It turns out Democrats only are against the war when a Republican is leading it. But when a Democrat's on it, they seem to not give a shit. Uh, and, and the war is still bad. Empire still doesn't help me. It still doesn't do any good thing good for us. And so, in the war, in the war. So, to all those who oppose the war, who are called progressives, we need to get out. We need to show the maximum possible political strength by the largest number of independent votes. So, Jill Stein... And anybody else that's on the ballot, vote for somebody else. In West Virginia, they voted for a guy who's in prison, who had a mullet. That mullet guy, that prisoner, the prisoner who had a mullet had 40% of West Virginian voters in the Democratic primary in uh, of this year, 2012. And that was big. That was significant. The Republicans all laughed about it, but that's something. That's showing that they would rather vote for a prisoner who's in Texas who has a mullet than they vote for Obama. That's saying something very significant. And people pay attention to that. So if we can mimic that same strategy here, get 10 to 20 percent of those voting for the progressives, that will make headway. That will make news. We didn't vote for Obama. We were Democrats. And we give our vote away to the progressives because we don't think that Obama was progressive enough. We keep our votes back, and that's how you hold power. We don't just give our votes because as soon as you give your vote away, your vote, and then you give the power away. So you, the vote's the only power we have as citizens. You hold that vote close to your chest, and you don't just pass it around to anybody. You hold that vote close. That's how you make your uh, vote more valuable. You don't just pass it out to anybody. That's all they give a shit is your vote. So hold it close to you and try to get what you want. Say, I'll vote for you if this. If you support this, you know, uh, that's the only way I'll vote for you. So we already see what's going to happen in Kentucky. Mitt Romney is going to win the election, hands down. He's already won Kentucky. Don't even think about it. Don't even worry about it. We see the course. Mitt Romney is going to win Kentucky. Uh, it's already set in motion. If it wasn't true, corporate money would go ahead and insist on it. So he would have a bunch of corporate money to make sure he wins. Big money has been behind Obama, too. So Obama and Romney, they'll probably spend some money here in Kentucky, but they will not. Uh, it's, not a, it's not an important state for them. So we're going to see... Um, we're going to see Mitt Romney win Kentucky. So since we're going to see Mitt Romney win Kentucky, then voting for an independent candidate will only make your vote relevant. So waste your vote. Vote for Obama or Romney if you want to. Um, this really says, it just goes on and on about the electoral strategy, so which I thought would have been better than what it was, but it is not. A um, couple words here, and then... Uh, I'll go ahead and mention this stuff before again because it's that important. Um, the election deadlines in Louisville, Kentucky. The the board of election is coming up. The board of election or board of education elections are coming up August 14th at 4 p.m. August 14th is the 11th today, so that's Saturday. So by next Tuesday at 4 p.m., that's the last day you have to run for the school board elections. If you want to have to be relevant in this election, you run for it, then you have a bullhorn and you can speak about the issues that you've been seeing and that you will change once you're in there. So, 
Well, that's the 14th, and also the deadline to file as a write-in candidate for the general election is October 26. October 26, so which is five to 11 days before the election. 11 days before the election is when you can file as a write-in candidate uh, for office. So the uh, deadline for the Board of Education is four days or three days from now, and then the deadline for the uh, write-in candidates is October 26, 2012. So 11 days before the November 6th general election. Um, so electoral strategy, we should use the, the third party Du Bois, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois electoral strategy. And when we use the W.E.B. Du Bois electoral strategy, we'll, the people will see, um, your analyst and your political analyst will see that Kentucky actually knows a little bit about t politics and that they're relevant and that they're trying to do to something to be relevant. And that's something. It's something. It's a, it, it's a good start. It shows that there's a base of progressives that's ready to go beyond where we're at now. And it shows that there's some true Democrats that's out there still, uh, people who actually vote for the people and people who actually care about the health care and education and ending the wars. If you're a principled person who cares about these things, then you should pull Obama to the left uh, here in Kentucky by voting for Jill Stein 2000, uh, the Green Party candidate, or any of the independent candidates, but Jill Stein will make you more progressive. So if you vote for Jill Stein, you will make Obama more progressive. And we could have lots of people vote for Jill Stein. Green Party, Green Party, I feel good every time I voted for Nader. Two times in elections, I feel good about it. I feel good every time I vote for Nader. I'd rather vote for somebody that I want and not get it and be disappointed about it instead of voting for somebody I don't want and getting that. So if I, if you're for Obama and you want him to be more progressive, vote for Jill Stein, which is, that's my stance. I, I like Obama, but I want him to do more policies that are progressive. He's running to the right. He's running to the middle. And... Like FDR speech, you could convince Obama that you, you know the, to agree of the ways that you see, but until you get out in the streets and you force his hand, uh, get out in the streets or get people to make phone calls and put the pressure on the representatives, and you force his hand to do the things that you want to do, that's when policies will change. And a lot of times it matters if you have a massive amount of people backing you. That helps. A small committed group of people can get a massive group of people behind them. This is true, but um, you need the massive uh, people out there. Morsi right now is using the people, the uh, Egyptian people, as leverage to use against SCAF, uh, the military, in order to get him some power. The military wants to take all the power and keep on their, their dictatorship, and Morsi is the democratically elected leader. So he's got the people behind him, and whenever he feels like it, he can call the people up to Tahir Square and get any demands that he wants out of the military. If he knows how to use it, because that's, uh, that's a big chip to use, and uh, you got to be successful. If you're going to use that chip, if you're going to have days of rage, which I'd like to have in Louisville from November 1st to the 6th for five days, just have freedom and democracy here in Louisville, if we can have that. Uh, then, then the establishment will definitely see us and hear us. We didn't get a win our NCAA championship. We saw Lexington lighting couches on fire and having parties out on the street. Come on, Louisville. It's time for us to have parties on the street. Time for us to burn a couple couches. And, and you know, don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt nobody. It's a protest, right? So if you don't hurt anybody, then that's legal. That's okay. I don't know. You probably can't light anything on fire. But you can stand out on the street, right? You can occupy. Occupy doesn't require anything. You only have to march. That's how... Lazy of a society we are. We don't march anymore, right? That's Jimmy Kimmel's joke. Um, so rise up, Kentucky. American government has declared war on the American people. It's a class war. The rich versus the poor. It's relentless and vicious. Those who speak the truth, who speak their mind, are vilified and effigized. Take Gatewood Galbraith. He's the last American left in Kentucky. Steve Bashir never got us casinos. Kentucky means dark and bloody ground. Even at Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, the freest country in the world, America, Cinderella was getting arrested. And dragged away in handcuffs when the, the union at Disneyland struck. We're fighting a war against our government. I declare war on war. I declare war on warmongers. Democrats and Republicans, the whole government. And they don't need congressional approval to declare war. I don't need congressional approval neither. So I'm an American. That's my executive privilege. I declare war on fascism. Being an American, that's also my executive privilege privilege. I declare war on corporate America and fight my government. So fuck these pricks. Kentucky's got lots of waterways, but we have no plumbing. 
Appalachia is the third is a third world country in the richest country in the world. What the fuck is up with that? People need our streams to drink out of, and King Cole is putting toxins and pollutions in our drinking water. We drank out of the creeks. We don't have running water. 60% of electric counties has no running water. Come on, King Cole, stop polluting our shit. Start investing in some new energy jobs before all the coal jobs are gone. Fuckers. <laughs>